Well, guys, if you've seen my other videos in the last few weeks, I've been uh, kind of making reference to this plow. It's been sitting over there next to the to the tractor. I just moved it over here uh, this morning, and uh, I had, like I say, made reference to it in a few other videos. This is a John Deere model. I think it's a model six one three. Uh, two bottom trip tie trip style or pull type however you want to call it um, you pull on this handle and that drops the plow in the ground you pull on it again it raises the plow back up this is meant to be pulled by a little tractor um, I've got an A that could probably pull it pretty easy I got a B that I may or may not use on it um, and uh, in previous videos I made comments about you know cleaning it up putting a coat of paint on it and stuff and I, I don't know, I'm gonna be using this plow um, and I can't hardly see painting it up and you know making it pretty when I'm just gonna take it out in the dirt and knock all, all the paint back off of it again. So um, I don't think I'm gonna worry about painting it. I think I am gonna worry about making sure it's functional. Um, it doesn't look like it needs much. Uh, it's got one coulter on the front here and it's missing the one on the other side. I picked up a couple of them they're laying there next to that disc so we'll see about getting another one mounted up on the other side there um, the plows look pretty good um, i've been rolling it around here in the garage by hand so it rolls pretty good uh, I, i've never tripped it so i don't know if the mechanism's working right in uh, i guess you call that the hub or gear assembly or whatever you want to call that so i think i'm gonna jack it up disconnect that arm and see if the mechanism is working right um, if it's not working right we'll tear it apart if it is working right i'll probably leave it alone and then i'll uh, probably just run around here and fix some of this other stuff this wire's all bent up out of whack just put a new piece of wire on it or a new rod or something uh looks like this rod's a little bent maybe take that off and straighten that out put it back on grease everything up oil everything up and uh, put it back outside and I uh, plan on using it in the spring, so I kind of doubt I'll use it this fall, but I might. So um, I'm going to start in on this thing and uh, kind of see what it needs, and hopefully it won't need much. So I'll catch you up here when i got something to show you. All right, guys. Well, the first uh, sort of an issue that I found, see how worn that, that uh, arm is coming off there? I don't know how well it's going to show up, but it's uh, you see it's worn really bad. The rod that attaches to that, this should be a circle, and it is nowhere near a circle, so that's kind of worn. That's nothing that I can't kind of touch up, weld that, and fix it. Um, I may weld on that, kind of grind it off, and kind of reform it. Uh, I'm not super worried about that just yet. Uh, I got it jacked up a little bit. The mechanism appears to be working. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to do. I'm going to use you can hear that squeak that's gonna be the next item we're gonna we're gonna fix here I put some grease on that end. there's a grease fitting there and you can see it greased up that end of the shaft uh, I'm gonna turn the wheel and pull the rod turn the wheel with my foot and pull the rod and you can see that now I let go of the rod and I continue to turn the rod kicks back so that's good then it's holding the rod is holding itself i'm going to pull the rod again turn the wheel see the mechanism is working snaps back up that's great news so hopefully everything's good in the gearbox so the rod is working like it should but you can hear that that squeak so what's going on here is right in through here see how that's solid that and then you get to this one Got a notch out of it. It's supposed to be a grease fitting goes down into there. So maybe that tube, it's not just a short little grease zerk, it's a grease zerk with a long tube out the out the bottom. So uh, maybe that tube is broke off. I don't know. I can't hardly see down in there. I've looked with a flashlight, can't hardly see. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this wheel off. There is a YouTube um uh, Oh, a YouTube person, uh, Tyler the Plow Guy, he makes a really good video on how to take a wheel off. This is a rubber tire unit, but it should be similar to this. So I'm going to take these three nuts loose, get that cap off of there, and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like underneath of there. So 
I think I want to take that wheel off, get a look at that bearing anyhow in there, and then see what's going on with that grease fitting. If it's broke or if it's just unthreaded, and we'll go from there. All right, so you take the three nuts off the end there, and might need a hammer, brass hammer if you got it. Work that cap off of there. Bolts might be bent. You might have to straighten your bolts up a little bit to get the cap off. And this is a, uh, this is, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's got, it's got different staggered positions on it. Uh, this should be held in with a pin that only goes one way. Uh, I'm going to wire brush this up, knock that pin out, and pull this spacer off of here. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so I cleaned it up with a wire brush, um, which is like the exact opposite of what I should be using to clean it up. This ought to be a greasy, nasty mess in here. Uh, it's all rusted up, so uh, that pin, you can see it, it was actually in a bind under this collar. That pin is supposed to sit in this collar in position, uh, you know, kind of push against that collar to keep tension on the hub, and that's what, you know, keeps pressure your play that way. Uh, this collar was actually spun over top of the end of the pin and so I had to kind of drive the collar to get it loose Now the collars loose on here, but the pin is so buggered up on both ends I'm gonna have to cut one end off that pin or drill it or something to get it to drive out I'll catch you up here in a bit. All right, so there's the pin. I drilled the head with a quarter-inch bit uh, drilled the one end and uh, You can see just how beat up this thing is and uh, now my collar's on here loose, so that comes off. Should be some shims here. Looks like three shims. And I don't think the wheel's going to come off yet. Let me uh, try, to get, try to get that off there. I'll catch you guys up here in a second. Okay, so there was... Uh, there's like a rubber, big rubber ring around the outside here. Uh, I don't think that mattered much. I started wiggling this thing, it wants to move. So hopefully there's no springs or anything in there gonna go boing. wiggle this around a little bit I'll catch you guys up all right so I tapped around on that axle a little bit trying to knock it in I can't get it in past this shoulder here um, I'm thinking this should be that bearing uh, so anyhow I think I'm gonna kind of keep tapping on this axle see if I can go it get it kind of back further uh, and pull this bearing out a little more proud of that axle where I can I think I need to whack that bearing in and then the uh, the hub or wheel or whatever should come off then. I don't know, I'm gonna keep beating around. I'll catch you guys up here in a second. Okay, so I got the axle beat just about flush with this other lip here. So now I'm gonna get a bar or something lay across here and whack it with a sledgehammer. See, I put the nuts on. Uh, it's just in an effort to keep me from buggering up all the threads if I slip a little bit. Okay, so there's my bar. There's my hammer. What I was doing was I'd lay that bar up against there and just kind of try not to rest it on the bolts too much, but and then just whack that bar. You can see it sticks out just a little past the bolt. So I would whack that bar and I'm trying to drive that into the hub here. And you see I got a little bit of wiggle there. So the, move, the wheel is moving. Now I'm just going to keep on wiggling and pulling and see if I can get that wheel off of there. Okay guys, so I prodded and beat and everything else and wiggled and twisted and this is what it looks like. It's not exactly what I expected. Um, so I'm just gonna poke around on here and see if I can get figured out what's going on with the, uh, there should be a grease fitting around here somewhere. And uh, you can see there's the channel for it. Should be a grease fitting threads into here, I think. I could be completely wrong about this. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to poke around. I'll get back with you guys in a minute. Well, you can see there's where the uh, grease fitting's supposed to go. 
it doesn't look like there's been a grease fitting in there for a long long time so uh to make sure i get all the dirt and rust and crap and shit cleaned out of there i'm gonna go ahead and open up this gear case and pull this out uh hopefully this this i, I keep calling i want to call this a bearing hopefully this bearing will slide off of here it's loose on the shaft um, so hopefully i pull this this case off shit don't don't come jumping out of there i know there's a spring on here uh and i think there's a spring down on the bottom too so we'll see what it looks like i'm going to open up this case and pull this side of it off and hopefully this bearing will come off with it i'll clean up the inside and outside of this bearing real well clean up this shaft real good and i'll catch you guys up here in a minute all right guys so that's what it looks like when you pull that uh, outer case off of there um you know you get your uh teeth here i was really hoping there'd be like a lip right here and then this whole you know this piece would come off of here but it looks like this is all one piece from out here clear up to the the teeth there sprocket looking deal there's that little spring i was afraid of down here and here's that big spring this is the tension now something to do with the tension on your uh your trip arm i'm not entirely sure how that all works um but again you can see how dry this all is here and uh yeah, there's a little bit of slop in that i'm gonna do what i can to get this whole piece pulled off of here and i'll catch you guys up here in a little bit all right guys so i squirt some pb blaster in the hole just keep wiggling turning wiggling turning um i ended up it, it seemed like it was hanging up out here i figured maybe there's a little burr out here on the end of the rod or shaft or axle whatever you want to call that i took my die grinder uh, with a flap wheel and just cleaned up the edge all around here and then just wiggle turn wiggle turn and it it ended up sliding right off so uh this is all this is rusty and not pitted real bad but it's rusty i'm gonna go ahead and clean up this i'm gonna clean up this surface here this is this is actually not terrible here um the hole doesn't seem to be out around on this thing there's really nothing uh particularly special about this um nothing's jumping out at me that you know is in really bad shape uh, i need a uh, grease fitting with a tube uh, i got to clean that up it should have some threads in it probably and uh, clean that up get a grease fitting put back on there and uh, grease it all up stick it back together i'll catch you guys up here in a little while all right guys if you've seen some of my other videos you might have seen this plow this is a uh, same model i think it's a model 613 uh john deere same things we're working on inside this i uh, brought home as a parts donor um you see the, the rod there is worn out worse than the one in the garage probably something's going on with the springs internally on this one but there's our grease pipe so I'm, uh, i've already broken it loose it's just about off of there and i uh, can't quite turn it by hand but i'm gonna get that pipe off of there we'll get it inside and uh, see what it looks like all right guys well i got the parts on the bench got them cleaned up as good as they're going to get um the uh, bolts on this wheel i ended up cutting two of them i was able to save one they were just so bent uh drive them out a little bit and then have to bend it and then drive it a little more and have to bend it the other way uh, so two of them are really bad i saved one i'm gonna have to get to the hardware store get some new carriage bolts Carriage bolts are important here because that square portion of the head is what engages that square hole on this plate. So I uh, need some bolts. Um, I also need a, need to figure out what kind of seal this takes. I don't know if that's maybe some, maybe some felt pressed in there or something. Uh, I'm going to have to do some research and find out what kind of seal goes in that casing. Because uh, where that shaft comes through, you see that shiny portion there. Um, there should be should be a seal riding against that that sits down in there so i have to get to get online do some research i cleaned up cleaned up the inside a little bit got the biggest part of the gunk and stuff out of it uh, cleaned up this surface with a uh, gasket scraper and a wire wheel um, and i got uh, plenty of um, gasket material here uh, i'm going to go ahead and cut a new gasket for that the this apparatus here uh, cleaned it up uh flap wheel on here try to knock that there's a little bit of a ridge you can kind of see it where that there's some kind of seal rides there uh anyhow clean that up sanded it real good so that's nice and smooth no burrs um cleaned up tried to 
clean up these edges down in this uh, with screwdriver and stuff, scraping all the junk out of there, wire wheel on the rest of it. Um, the threads, I kind of chased the threads there. We got our grease pipe off of our donor plow and it now threads in there real nice. So uh, we'll be able to use that. Over here, uh, cleaned up this, uh, cleaned up this shaft a little bit more with the uh, die grinder with a little flap wheel. Um, so it's kind of nice now, no, uh, no bad burrs or pits or anything real bad on it. Cleaned up this surface with a gasket scraper and a wire wheel here. So I think I round up, uh, round up this seal and a couple of bolts or three bolts and uh, we should be good to start putting stuff back together. So I will catch you guys up when I got something to show you. All right guys, so it's two days later uh, since I've worked on this plow last. Uh, last thing I did was cleaned up these parts here and then I went inside, did some research on the seal for this, this is supposed to be a felt seal. Um, and this edge right here that I, I kind of thought maybe kind of looked worn down, that's apparently that's kind of a normal thing. Um, I found out also that this number I've been going by, this it says John Deere 613, or what's that say? 61, hell yeah, 613 is not the model of the plow because this one over here says John Deere 612. That's the model or that's the part number for the beam of the plow. But because it's got a 613 here and, uh, and then 612 over there, that means that this is a model 52. So uh, I found that information on, uh, I think the site is called Mr. B Tractors or Mr. B's Tractor or something like that. But apparently it's the same feller that does the uh, YouTube uh, stuff under the name uh, Tyler the Plow Guy. And he also then sells stuff on eBay apparently under the username 2Sill Fan. So if you look for John Deere Clutch Parts, you'll see his listings for uh, parts here. Um, so anyhow, I found also when I was doing that research that he has made another video. I saw one video that he did, and apparently that's an old video. He did a much more extensive video recently and really detailed tearing this apart. So the first part of this video, I don't even know if I'm gonna include that or I might just fast forward through all that learning that I did on my own with that because um, he details it a whole lot better than I will. So look for that. Uh, I'll try to put a link down in the bottom in the description for that or um, uh, search for uh, John Deere enclosed clutch plow rebuild, something like that. John Deere plow enclosed clutch. And you'll see him sitting Indian style, uh, tearing apart one of these clutches and describing what he's doing and talking about the parts and, and just everything that you need to know about this. Um, so anyhow, I got a hold of him and uh, ordered some parts. I ordered uh, the felt seal that I need. He must make this seal. You can't get it from John Deere anymore, I guess. So um, he's got a, a source for that seal. He also sells a kit with this gasket, um, that rubber seal that goes on the outside of the wheel. Uh, looked like, uh, I think a couple of shims maybe in that kit and uh, both springs. Uh, and in that video, he also talks about these springs. He talks about the upper spring here being kind of worn out. And even though it is good, he said you start examining it and it's got weak spots in it. And then the bottom spring, um, he talked about, where's that at? It's over here maybe. Anyhow, he talked about this other spring. Um, he said, you know, oh, hell, there it is right there. Um, he's like, yeah, it looks good on the outside. He said, but if you feel around the backside, and I did with a gloved finger, it's like worn halfway through where that spring rubs against the sprocket teeth. So that spring is actually, it looks good from about here, but if you feel up behind it, kind of rub your finger along it, it's got a huge smooth spot worn across it where that spring is just about gone. So. I'm waiting on uh, those springs and that felt to come in. While I'm waiting on that, I'm going to also then see how much 
play I got. This, this is riveted onto this bar. This comes down, makes a 90 degree bend and goes in. I got a lot of slop in that rivet there or something. So while I'm waiting on those parts to, to be able to put this back together, I'm just gonna tear this thing completely apart, clean it up really well. This went from, you know, just a new grease fitting to, I might as well just go ahead and rebuild the whole damn, uh, the whole damn thing there. I'm in it this deep, so I'm gonna get on that. I'm gonna knock that rivet out. I'm gonna disassemble the rest of this clutch assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and weld on that, grind on it, and clean that, uh, clean the end of that shaft up. And uh, this bar over here, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this in, fill this all in, and grind that off, and clean that up, and make that a circle again. So check out Tyler's video. He does a whole lot better job than I'm gonna do. And I will catch you guys up when I got something worth showing you. All right, guys. Well, I'm trying something new here in an attempt to save a dime. Uh, trying to get ingenuity. I need to replace this rivet. It's kind of bent up and beat up. That's what uh, holds that that lever onto that linkage or whatever you want to call that roller there. Um, so I I beat the old rivet out and the end of it kind of flaked off, and I don't think I'll be able to reuse that rivet. So I got a piece of round stock. I don't know, just laying over there in the pile in the corner. Um, it's about the same diameter. If it ain't the same diameter, it's awful close. And uh, it's, you know, it should be pretty soft material. And uh, so I just heated up the very tip of it. I put it in my uh, vise and just had a little bit of the tip sticking out. And I heated up just the tip and beat it with a hammer to kind of put a head on it. So this will be my first attempt at making a rivet. So I'm gonna let that cool down nice and slow you know, as slow as it can in the air. And then I'm gonna cut it to, oh, about that long, and uh, try to try to use that as a rivet. So, might be an idea for you guys. If you're in a pickle, you need a rivet, and you ain't got one, that's, I'm gonna try to make one. Okay, next thing on the agenda is to make a gasket for this, and how I'm gonna do that is, you can pick this stuff up at Napa, AutoZone, Advance Auto, wherever you find car parts. Um, this is gasket material. So this 30 seconds of an inch tan fiber stuff is pretty good to use for a lot of different things. You use this for gear cases, um, all kind of oddball stuff. Carburetor, bowl gaskets, you name it, and this tan fiber stuff is pretty good for it. Um, so to, to work that, you're gonna need just a pair of scissors. I use them old metal shears hanging there. Um, just an old pair of heavy scissors, cut, it's just paper, it's heavy paper. You're gonna need some hollow punches to knock the holes out once you get it uh, cut out. And I use a little piece of, uh, this is edge molding, like flooring molding. Uh, it's kind of soft, plasticky. It works real good to back up. I lay my paper on there and then punch through it. Um, so I'm gonna oil this part up. I'm gonna lay my paper out. I'm gonna oil this part up lightly. I'm gonna flip the part over and set the oiled side down on the paper. And I'll show you what that looks like. It normally gives a really good outline for what you need to cut out. All right, well this one did not work out the best. Um, I don't know if the part's just that far out of square. If my table's got that much of a bow in it. But you can kind of get the, uh, get what I mean, you know, with just oil it up, lay it there, and. That gives me a pretty good idea where to cut. I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative right in through here, and that hole especially is, uh, I'm gonna have to really figure that out. But maybe I'll cut the rest of it out, lay it on top of the part, and then mark the hole. So I'll catch you guys up after I get that cut out. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, drop the bolts in there just to make sure it's gonna fit. And it ain't the prettiest thing in the world, but it ain't the ugliest thing either. And I just saved myself a bunch of money by not buying a gasket, so. On to the next thing. Well guys, it's probably been a month since I've been out here to work on this thing. It's just been kind of sitting here in pieces waiting for me to get time to put it back together. I'm gonna try to make time to do it tonight. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do, you can tell I've got it completely disassembled down to the shaft here. Uh, I even had the shaft out. Um, so I put the shaft back in for now and I had it out because I worked that end over and uh, trued it back up because it was worn really bad. So um, 
I think also I made a little clip of uh, making this rivet. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this trip arm in and this has a keyway. The lever that rides on that has a, uh, the best I can figure is that's uh, that key is either pressed in there or was cast in, uh, but I can't get it out, so we're gonna leave that in. That key goes in there. This is gonna be two-handed operation, and you can see this hole and this hole will then line up, and I will put the rivet in. I'm gonna use a sledgehammer to back it, and I'm gonna kind of peen the head over uh, with a small hammer. So I'm gonna do that. Then the next thing will be uh, this large washer goes on the shaft. This assembly then goes on the shaft with uh, the key. The key is somewhere, somewhere, here we go, this key. So again, guys, uh, I'm gonna revert back or refer you back to Tyler the Plow Guy's video. Uh, he's gonna do a much better job of this reassembly than I will. So uh, I'm gonna put most of this stuff back in and I'll catch you up here in a bit. All right guys, so I don't know if I filmed it before or not, but there used to be a lot of play right here. Um, so I put my arm on I, and I set my rivet now and there is no play now in this, this uh, union of these two parts. So that's great news. Um, the bad news is I put the son of a bitch on 180 degrees backwards. This little tab should be on the inside hooked to the spring. So now I get to grind off the head off the rivet that I just set and drive it out and make a new rivet and put it on the right way. Well, we got our gear, gear case all put back together, or clutch assembly, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, I'm not going to waste your time and my time both uh, to make a video to show you how to put this back together. Go to Tyler the Plow Guy's channel here on YouTube, and he does a very good job of showing you how to put that all back together. So uh, what I've done to this plow besides this was, uh, if you remember, this uh, rod was really worn. I welded that and ground it back off and filed it nice and even, uh, nice and smooth. Filled that all back in where it was worn. This rod where it rode on that shaft was really worn, so I did the same thing here. Welded it back in, ground it off, and uh, cleaned it up. I uh, fabricated this uh, linkage rod here. It's no longer adjustable. I'm sure it should be adjustable like this one over here, uh, but just in an effort to uh, you know, get things done. It ain't right, but it's gonna work really well. Uh, bent about a three quarter loop on this end of the rod and a bent, it's a tighter than 90 angle down here with a cotter, pee, cotter key or cotter pin, whatever you wanna call it, down there. So you hook the loop on this side and then drop the end down there and pin it. So this is working really well. Oiled those parts up, uh, worked the handle here and working pretty good uh, it needs loosened up a little bit more this side here needed again a little bit of work this had a hairpin on it keeping it together oh that was pretty bad um, the uh, linkage down here this rod here was all bent up out of shape so I bend it back it's in pretty good shape put a little oil on the working parts down there and this side's working real smooth so the next video, I think we're gonna be looking at culters on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make that one work. Hopefully I will. Uh, I also have a couple of other replacements off of the parts plow there. So we're gonna to try to get one mounted up on that other side. I also want to take a look at this tail wheel, make sure it's in good working order, make sure if there's bearings in there, make sure they're in good shape. And it probably wouldn't hurt to take a look at this, this wheel here too. So. Uh, if you like this video, hopefully it helps you if you're working on something like this, click that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos of me working on this thing, or I got to tinker with that Kubota, and I definitely need to shoot my crossbow some more. Rut is coming in here, uh, southeastern Indiana. I think today's October 30th. The deer are moving. Uh, we got some nice cold weather, so I need to get that crossbow shot because I need to get in the woods. So click that subscribe button. You can see any of the videos that I'm making on all kind of oddball stuff. Uh, until the next video, guys, keep on tinkering.